Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas. Who's ready for a story, kids? It just suddenly went Tennessee on me. <laughs> Welcome to Audio Shelf. A place where we take you on a fantastic journey through our audiobook adventures. I'm Brad. And I'm Brittany. And we are the voices in your head. Uh, it's Christmas time. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we say that throughout like every single Christmas episode. <laughs> we do, we do. Thanks, Pat. Yes. So, I mean, I guess if you don't know... That reference is from For the Boys. Yes. Starring Bette Midler and Bette Midler. And how do you not know? Right. That's the bigger question here. I mean, we're just kind of giving you a handicap by telling you right now. Exactly. So it means that you're not a Bette fan. Yeah. Which is a bad fan. Ooh, I like that. Anyway. <laughs> Back to Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We'll get off our Bette high horse. <laughs> So today, we are doing on this holly jolly Christmas. It's a holly jolly Christmas. It's the best time, time of, of the year. year. Oh, oh by my golly, golly it's a holly jolly Christmas, Christmas this year. God, we, we suck. suck. <laughs> <laughs> we are not singers. Uh, Mary, did you know that's a baby boy? Oh, sorry. I'm just going to give you the floor. I'm sorry. Sorry, it just came to me. It was like... It was a, a Christmas ghost. It was a Christmas ghost from past, present, and future. Yeah. <laughs> so by that, that's a little clue. That's a little clue. Of what we're doing. Yes. Today, we are doing a Christmas carol. The most classic Christmas story of all time. Yes. This is what invented Christmas, in a way. It is. It's exactly the reason why there is Christmas. Exactly. Trademark it. Charles Dickens. He did it. Yep. As you said, Charles Dickens is the author. <laughs> Sorry, beat you to it. I know. And the narrator is... Tim, Tim Curry! Oh, that's good. That's so, so nice exciting. to say. Yes, it is. I love that name. Yes, it's a, such a good name when you see it on anything. Mm -hmm. I mean, Tim Curry just... It's just greatness from beginning to end. Exactly. So All that's the time. We've been looking to do this book for a whole year now. Yeah. We already decided this is our Christmas book. Yeah. When we um were starting to think about putting a Lemony Snicket episode in. Yes. Which was last year because Brad, of course, has listened to them and I didn't. So I was telling him, oh, I'm going to listen to it in the new year. Mm -hmm. When I found out it was narrated by Tim Curry, I mean, I immediately jumped on it. Exactly. So then we started searching for other Tim Curry narrated books and we found A Christmas Carol. And we were like, we had to have this. Yes. Exactly like that. Exactly. The audiobook release date was December 1st, 2010. Right in time for the holidays. Right in time. And, and back in 2010. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just celebrated its seventh birthday. <laughs> or it's like 200th birthday. It the, came out in 1849. The Audible Studios version. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, there, there we go. go. The duration was three hours and 33 minutes. It's a lot of threes. That's a lot of threes. It's like the 666. Illuminati. Oh. Or 666. 333. Three, three. If you flip the threes around and copy them, put them together. And then add them together. 888. Ooh. Wait. <laughs> That's nothing. That's nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. And the genre is classic, ghost story, and appreciate your life, you idiot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I didn't even see that. I was like, what is she saying? <laughs> appreciate your life, <laughs> you idiot. <laughs> that was good. That was a nice touch. Yes, I believe mm. so. The summary is taken from Amazon. A Christmas Carol has constantly been in print since its original publication in 1849. Mm. The year I was born. <laughs> it was a good year. <laughs> and has been adapted for stage, television, film, and opera. Opera. Oh, opera. 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 Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to be fancy. <laughs> Uh, it has often been credited with returning the jovial and festive atmosphere to the holiday season in Britain and North America, following the somber period that emerged during the Industrial Revolution. Mm. This is some history. Yeah. The story opens up on a bleak and cold Christmas Eve, as Ebenezer Scrooge is closing up his office for the day. As the story progresses and Christmas morning approaches, Scrooge encounters the unforgettable characters that make this story a classic. Bob Cratchit, Tiny 
Tim. And of course, the ghosts of Christmas past, present, and yet to come. I always have wondered why Ebenezer, as a name of a character. is that Was that a common name in 1849? I think so. I would hate 1849. Ebenezer? Like, what is the nickname? Ebba? Ebba. Come on, Ebs. You gonna flow with me? <laughs> <laughs> you on Christmas flow? Uh, what's up, Niza? What you mean, Niza? <laughs> <laughs> that sounds... <laughs> That sounds borderline offensive. Yeah, I know, right? Oh. <laughs> I said Niza. <laughs> Clarifying, Niza is the nickname for Ebenezer. 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 E- Ebenezer. I think Ebenezer is the female version. That's definitely, definitely. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, yeah, I, I've just always had a curious little thing for the name Ebenezer. I wonder if there's a modern person out there, like, living that has the name Ebenezer. Yeah, I'm, I want to know. It's probably a celebrity's child or something. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Hmm. The more you think about The more you think. So let's talk about Mr. Curry's performance. Yes, please. What did you think? What didn't I think? What didn't you think? Let's just talk about the good things. Because there, there are, are no. no bad things. Yes, it's very true. Uh, I felt like this story, like v- written very classic mm-hmm. and very old-timey, old-world, English... And I thought that Tim Curry's voice is kind of, he has an accent, Mm -hmm. but it's soft and it's sophisticated sounding. Mm -hmm. It's like one of those accents that you would hear in the 1800s. Yeah. And so I felt his voice fit the material perfectly. Mm -hmm. And he was born to do this book, much like he was born to do everything else. Exactly. I thought it was perfect because it wasn't hard to follow along with. Yeah. I was very nervous about the writing, the writing style of A Christmas Carol because I don't really like classics too much. And I was nervous I was going to fall asleep. I was nervous that I was going to miss storyline. But no, with him, it was Mm -hmm. just so easy to follow along with. And I loved every minute of it. Yeah. And there were a lot of names. So many names. Cratchit. Marley and me. I know, right? Every time she said, I love how he said Molly every time he said, I was like, is he saying Molly? I was who's dropping Molly? <laughs> was, is Back Miley in- Cyrus in this in this movie or book or whatever like, it was? I was like, who's dropping Molly in 1849? Charles Dickens. <laughs> Charles Dickens. But yeah, no, there was Ma- Marley. I keep saying Molly now. Marley. <laughs> there was Tiny Tim. There was all the wives. There was Little Bill. Little Bill. Little Bill. Little Bill. Well, that Little Bill grown would be Big Bill, who let's not let's go, not go there. <laughs> He's dropping Molly <laughs> and other people's drinks. <laughs> <laughs> We're not laughing at the situation. No, this we're is just serious. laughing at the connection we just made between yes. a Christmas Carol and that. Exactly. I feel and like he called somebody Tiny Tim, and then he said like Little Bob or something. I don't, I don't know. Remember. Well, there's a lot of kids. There's there, a lot there's of kids. There's a lot of kids, and I don't keep track of kids. Mm-hmm. I don't because enjoy he them. visited the little kids. Like the, the the parents of those little kids. And then he was like, ooh, look at them opening presents. And yeah. there's a lot of kids. But Tiny Tim was the most memorable oh, one. Oh, yeah. Tiny Tim is always the most memorable one. I was crying, crying when Tiny Tim died. Spoiler. Girl, this was written in 1849. <laughs> this and you was 200 years old. <laughs> <laughs> but he only died in, in the memory or yeah. the, the vision. In so the future. In the future, he lives. Mm-hmm. Right? Yes. Well, he dies in the what's to come. What's to come. If you don't get your stuff together. Get it together, Scrooge. <laughs> Uh, but uh, yeah, yeah, what's to come? And then he, in the end, he's like, oh, I'm a happy little boy. Yeah, mm-hmm. yep. exactly. So what did you think of Tim Curry's voices? I love them. However, there wasn't a huge range of voices. except you think so? Except for when he did Scrooge's voice. Because I feel like his narrator voice was different from Scrooge's, which is mm-hmm. something that a lot of the narrators that we've talked to before say that's that's not the case. They usually do their narrator voice as the main character's voice. Yeah, that's very true. So his voice for Scrooge was in was endearing because it was like this grumpy old man. However, for like Bob and all the other ones, I feel like there it was just kind of like Tim Curry's voice. Oh, see, I thought that he gave subtle differences to each one, mm-hmm. just like giving them their own unique character traits. Mm-hmm. He gave them their own unique voices. Yeah. So he, even if there wasn't a big change between yeah. each one. 
I feel like there was enough of a change to where I was like, oh, that's Marley's voice. Yeah. Yeah. I can tell there was like subtle changes. I agree with yeah. you. Maybe it's just the fact that I was like drooling over Tim Curry the entire time. I was just I mean, like, probably. oh my God, Tim Curry. Yeah. I would forget that we were listening to a book narrated by Tim Curry and then I would remember and I would get really excited. Exactly. Because it was such a good book. Yes. And it kind of makes me upset when other people, uh, you know, volunteer or suggest other narrations of this book. Yeah. Like, I'm all about Jim Dale for Harry Potter, but he's not better than Tim Curry. Yeah, it's like, nah. And I was on this website that I'm on, everyone's like, oh my god, look, listen to this book, The Christmas Carol, narrated by, narrated by this actor, or this narrator. And I'm like, nope, Tim Curry's the winner. Tim I mean, Curry's the winner. I'm going to tell you, it was hard to find the, the description and the stats mm-hmm. for the Tim Curry one. Like, it was hard to bring that up in Amazon. I would type really? in A Christmas Carol, Tim Curry, and it would give me every single other wow. book. And every time I would click on... Because... Usually for Amazon, it gives you the normal paperback book, mm-hmm. and then you click on that, and then you can change the format. Format, yeah, mm-hmm. thank you. And every time I would change it, it would give me a narrator that wasn't Tim Curry. Mm. So the mm. first book, I was like, okay, this is the one. Yes. And it turned out it wasn't. And that's so odd because this is Audible Studio Studios. Yeah. Who, produ- who you know produced it? So you would think that would be the first one that comes up. Yeah, especially in the Amazon search. But, Mm. I mean, you would think that putting his name in it, his name is on the CD cover, too, of this book thing. Oh, yeah, it's like narrated by Tim Curry. Yeah, Mm because it's a special collection. Exactly, and I love, I'm I'm just so obsessed with the fact that we got this this book, so. I also really love the the cover, too. Eat it. Eat what? This other narrator's gonna eat it. Oh, yeah. Eat, eat your Christmas dinner. One thing I do want to say is that I've never actually read this book at all until mm-hmm. this narration, until exactly. this audiobook. Yes. So I've seen the movies. I've mm-hmm. seen the Flintstone one. Yes. seen the other one. Bill Murray. The Muppet one. The Muppet one. Yeah, the Bill Murray one. And is it a miracle or what is it called? A miracle on 34th Street? No, not that. What's the other one? It's like happily. What's that other one that? Our school, high school used to do every year for the Christmas play. It's a Wonderful Life. Oh, yeah. It's a Wonderful Isn't Life. Isn't it? It's a Wonderful Life similar to this yeah. story? Because yes. doesn't he go and see the ghost of Christmas past, present, and future? But I think it's... he sees the future. If he No, if he weren't ever born. Oh. Is his thing. Yes. When he wants to, he wanted to commit suicide. Yes. And that was that. And then yeah. so the ghosts took him. And it was only one ghost. Yeah. And they took him. Okay. So- it, they took him and showed him like this is what would happen to you wouldn't have a family first of all exactly and this is what would happen to your wife if you were never born Mm -hmm. and this is what would happen to um everybody else the bank that you work at yes very similar to a christmas carol it is it's Hmm. kind of like the tail end Yes. Of a Christmas carol. It's like a modernized version Mm -hmm. in a way of like now we're dealing with this hot topic of suicide. I mean, of course, It's a Wonder of Life is a very old play. Yeah. And I don't think he ever wanted to like, I mean, back in those days, I don't think it was a thing of like, I'm going to pretend like, or I'm going to say that I want to commit suicide. It was like him being like, I just wish I was never here. I wish I wasn't a burden to everybody. Because I remember him in the play. He went to the bridge. He went to the bridge. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. But back to A Christmas Christmas Carol. It's crazy how this story, this classic, has spawned all these other stories that are very similar. Yeah. That are similar and then there's all these adaptations of Mm -hmm. it and it's just, it survived. Yes. And the new movie that came out, which is great that we're doing this episode this season, this year, because the new movie. Oh, I didn't even realize there was a movie. Oh my God. Yes. It's about Charles Dickens writing A Christmas Carol. And it's, it has... Um, the be- the beast from Beauty and the Beast. Oh, yes, but not he's as a beast. he's Charles Dickens, Ooh. and it has Christopher Plummer as Ebenezer Scrooge. How in the yes. world? Yes, have you not heard about this? No, I have not heard about this. Oh my god! Oh my god! It's called the Man Who Invented Christmas. Oh, mm-hmm. that's a cute name. Yes, mm, that's so good. So, and it talks about the Industrial Revolution and how he created this. He was like he was poor. And he was had a lot of debts, and he created this character, Ebenezer Scrooge, who would pop up with Christopher Plummer being in the background and be imaginary, and like r- help him write the story. Mm, and he's like, fantastic. "Scrooge, I'm writing here, and you're gonna you're gonna do this." And I haven't seen the movie yet, but it came out Thanksgiving week. Ooh, mm-hmm. I never heard of it. Yeah, I want to go see we it. Need to watch that. It looked real good. Yeah, that does. It sounds good. Yes, just so from. 
it's great that we're doing this. Yeah, it really is. So that's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just think it's interesting how this work has spawned so much inspiration for every single facet of mm-hmm. the arts field. Yeah. And also, like I said, I haven't ever read this book at all until now. Mm-hmm. So I feel like what's special about the book and what I would recommend for everybody to read the book is that the details in it and the descriptions are so beautiful. Mm -hmm. Like they're just so like gorgeous to hear. It's a very visual book. Yeah. And if you're reading it and or listening to it, you get the same feel sometimes, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's that magic of the writing. Yeah. It's Christmas magic. Christmas miracle. I love Christmas. I do. I Mm. love it. And it's crazy because this book also started they get a lot of credit to this book about starting the Christmas dinners and oh. mm-hmm, and like the jovial like times of of wrapping presents with your family and your Christmas tree. This book kind of started that whole renaissance. Yeah, that's really neat. That's yeah, I can see why because there's the thing about like Tiny Tim's family and they just they all love each other even though they have nothing. Mm-hmm. But they all just love each other so much. Yeah, and the dad just wanted off. He just he wanted a, va- a little vacation, Christmas yeah. vacation. He wanted vacation, and Scrooge was like, "Screw you." Scrooge was like, "Screwge you." <laughs> <laughs> I want to say that during the holidays. You're like, "Screwge you." Screwge you. <laughs> <laughs> copyrighted. Yes. Can we yourself. copyright something copyrighted? I don't know if the copyright is expired on Scrooge. Hmm. Well, you heard it here first. Yeah. Go Scrooge yourself. Yeah. Don't try to take it, Taylor Swift. <laughs> It ain't your Christmas present. (laughs) Uh, Anyway, another cool thing about this book is that with the audiobook, there were no transitions. Mm -hmm. Uh, It was just pretty much straightforward. There were parts, like when you look at the audible player, Mm -hmm. um, it had like chapter one was 50 minutes and then chapter two and chapter three and chapter four. Uh, But it only had, I think, four or five chapters. Mm, Five. Five. And I loved it because each chapter was designed for the past, present, and Oh, that's a good note. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think the first two chapters were about, like, the the first time he was visited by the ghost that was telling him, hey, this is what's about to happen with these Mm -hmm. ghosts. And then the the first chapter was all about just setting the stage and telling us how horrible of a man Scrooge was. Yeah. I really like how the, the... audiobook was formatted and designed yeah i mean it wasted no time i'm really surprised that the book didn't take two hours to introduce us to who scrooge was Mm -hmm. and then take us on the ride of with the ghost for the last hour and a half i mean it jumps in it jumps in he goes home and he's like he sees the ghost of his friend yes and he's like you've Mm -hmm. been dead seven years exactly like you said it jumps in like a cat in a christmas tree so what did you think about <laughs> <laughs> So in the three and a half hours, uh-huh. did you get everything that you needed from this book? Oh, completely everything. I got everything and more. I got Christmas spirit. Mm-hmm. Like I felt like a ghost entered me. Mm. Have you ever had sex? Wait, that was Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> this is not after dark. Ah! Uh. I, th- I felt like... A ghost had visited me. Visited you and gave you Christmas joy. And Christmas joy. Okay. All right. I wish I had ghost magic. Jingle balls, jingle balls, jingles all the way. I don't know why I said that. (laughs) I don't know why we say a lot of the things that we say. So yes, ghosts visiting us, giving us Christmas joy. Mm -hmm. And it got me prepared for the holidays. Like I'm so excited. Yes. So excited for Friends, Miss. I can't wait. We talked a little bit, bit about this last year. Friends Miss is trademarked. Yes. So any of you fools that want to try to claim that it's a Friends Miss, get out. I am doing lemon squeezes so hard right now. He is squeezing lemons. <sighs> oh my God. Sorry. That's my coping skill. Um. Yes. I can't oh, stand. That's another candle. Mm, I mean, ooh, another soap. Yes. Lemon. Good idea. Ooh, lemon squeezes. Yes. Oh, that's good. I can't stand when people are saying, oh, celebrating Friendsgiving or Friends Miss for the first year. A friend anniversary. Friends anniversary. Oh my God. We started it and you can take it and eat it mm-hmm. because well, how, this is our 14th or 15th. 
let's see, it started in 2005. Okay, so 2001 was 17 years ago. What's 17 minus four? 13. 13? 13. 13. Yeah. So this will be 13 Holy cow. Years. And did they, were they talking about Friends, Mr. Friendsgiving or Friends Anniversary in thir- like 13 years ago? Um, I think not. No, I think not. Because we were busy doing it. Yes. I mean. <laughs> doing it, doing it, Why? phone doing it. <laughs> Why is this so? Uh, we, we were busy making history. Making history and no one gives us credit. No. Nobody's ever given us credit for Friends with, And now Friends with is a thing. Yes. Now Friends with is a thing. Someone posted on Facebook the other day celebrating our first annual Friends with. Um, excuse me? Bitch. I was going to say, this bitch. <laughs> we no. have 13 years. We have 13 years under our belt. And we can prove that we have 13 years. So if we need to go to the trademark office and trademark friends exactly. and get however much money we decide mm-hmm. on every time you use the term friends, miss, yes. we will. Yes. We need money. We have pictures. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> we do need money. <laughs> oh. Oh. The pictures. We, need pic- <laughs> we have pictures. <laughs> We have, um, we have a color scheme. It's color pink and scheme. green. Yes, pink and green. <laughs> <laughs> Although that's kind of fallen off in the recent years. Yes, yes, yes. Oh my goodness! But we have a really nice. Did you find that Karen picture, or did you make it? I made it. So for our Facebook group, we have a Karen Walker from Will and Grace picture that says "Friends Miss." Friends and I was realness. Friends miss realness. And I was like, did Brittany make this or did she find it? Because that's mixing Will and Grace, RuPaul's Drag Race, and our holiday Friends Miss all in one. It is the gift that keeps on giving. Oh, so I want to. That's going to be the picture every year. Yeah. For Facebook. And you know, I was trying to find something that would be Will and Grace themed because I was like. I really like the Christmas episodes of Will and Grace a lot. Mm -hmm. So I went and I took a screenshot of that one. And then I put the words on it. Did you like Gay Old Christmas? Yes. Oh, my God. Oh, it was so good. (laughs) Oh, my God. He was like, Jack was going through like all of the different like mustache warrior or whatever he said. And then she's like, he's a homo. He's a homo. (laughs) (laughs) Just no accent. Just just like. (sighs) He's a homo. God. (laughs) God, what was her name? Carolyn. Carolyn. Yeah. Carolyn oh. O'Sullivan. Uh, oh, I loved the bloopers at the end. Yes. Oh, my God. I love those. And then when she started, did you like the Debbie Rowland? Oh, uh, Debbie Rowland. Yes. Debbie portrait. Reynolds portrait. Oh, oh my God. Oh, it was I, uh, so good. R.I.P. I almost cried. Oh, my God. Mm. I was like, I watched the episode twice because mm-hmm. I watched it once without Sean. And then Sean came home and I was like, this is the funniest episode yes. of the season so far. Oh, my God. So hilarious. So we watched it again. And it's funny because that one actually gives a Christmas Carol vibe. Exactly. So it's so full circle. Full circle. We're here with Christmas Carol realness. Yes. Oh, my goodness. Mm. What a great, magical Christmas it's been, hasn't it? I said, hasn't it? (laughs) (laughs) We gave the people some time to answer. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. So is it that time of the year? To answer if we shelf. Yes. Or if we it sheer? It is. What is shelf? in your stocking on that shelf? I don't know. I'm trying to make it Christmassy. I, you're doing a very good <laughs> job. You are doing an excellent job. I just, I usually just fill our own stockings. Mm. So. So will you shelf or shelf? I got a shelf. Oh, hands down. I didn't even want to say shove. I know, right? Because it feels like an insult. Yes. This is shelved completely. We bought it. I'm going to make love to it on Christmas under the freaking Christmas tree. Oh, by the fireplace. By the fake fireplace that we have. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you have to. And and then you wrap it back in a bow. You put yep. the cellophane on it. You clean it off first. Oh, clean it off. Make lots of mm-hmm. cleanliness rags get around. that get that all sucked up yes and <clears> then <throat> put a bow on it mm-hmm. put it on the shelf and then take yep. it down every year and do the same every thing. year every year clockwork yep and then if especially when um tim curry makes his little coughing noise oh my gosh <laughs> like i 
cannot like this is why tim curry is the best performer of ever ever like there's just no other person yes i mean he does so many things and things that you wouldn't expect him to do because he's such a fantastic entertainer yeah yes Mm. he delivered he did he delivered this audiobook on a sleigh girl Mm. he slayed it Mm. Mm. literally ho 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 okay well it i need to I need to stop Brad at some point because he will just keep going. Uh, have yourself a Merry Little Christmas. I started, I tried, but I'm sorry that one slipped through. <laughs> that about does it for our Christmas episode. Very mm-hmm. special because mm-hmm. Christmas only comes on Monday once every seven years. Years, right? Six it's or seven. an amazing episode day mm-hmm. because yeah. it's Christmas. Christmas. Christmas time. Christmas time. In the city. I don't know that one. ring ling Hear them sing. ding ling It's Christmas time. In the city. In the city. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, if we haven't scared you off yet because we're being, like, really freaking weird, uh, please, 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 please subscribe to us on Google Play Music, iTunes Podcast, and Stitcher. We, that that's all we want from you. Your Christmas gift to us can be mm-hmm. to subscribe. And also, yes. All I want for Christmas is you. And a Twitter follow at Audio Shelf Me. Yes, please. All we want for Christmas is for you to follow us on Twitter, hit us up on Facebook, and go on our website at audioshelf.me and click on the Audible affiliate link to download a 30 day free Christmas trial. Christmas! And get free books. Mm-hmm. And how many books do you get? Um, I think you get two. Two free books. That's two stocking stuffers. That is two. Oh, my God. You could give the gift of an Audible subscription. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. That's real nice. Yeah. It you really is. You would be the, the best Christmas gift giver this year. Yeah, you'd be the talk of the party. Mm. Unless you just have a party with yourself and then you just talk to yourself. If you're by yourself, come with us to Friendsmas. Maybe we shouldn't put that up. No, but we will. Yeah, we will. We're friendly. Yeah, sometimes. Just don't kill us. And we won't kill you. (laughs) Anyway. Merry Christmas. Yeah. Merry (laughs) Christmas, everybody. Happy New Year. Are we going to have a New Year's episode? Yeah. Okay. We'll see you in New Year's. we'll see you in another week. (laughs) (laughs) See you next Monday. (laughs) Bye. Bye. Ho, ho, ho. This has been Audio Shelf, where we release new episodes every Monday. If you want to stay updated, listen to previous episodes, or suggest audiobooks for us to feature, visit us at audioshelf.me. We are Brad and Brittany. Thank you for listening. Two. Oh, shit. <laughs> Sorry, you want to do it again? I thought you were going to say it, and I was like, that was going to be your base. I couldn't figure out what I wanted to do. <laughs> so the summary is taken from Goodreads. Mm. <laughs> what? <laughs> Should be taken from Audible since it's Audible. Uh, it's taken from Amazon. Oh. A Christmas Carol has constantly been in print since. His- <laughs> oh, God. Should I have done this? Uh, okay, here we go. <clears throat> you got this. You got this. Do it. Do it. Do it. It has often been credited with returning the jovial and festive atmosphere. <laughs> <laughs> Atmos what? Feel. <laughs> atmosphere. Uh. I like Five Guys. <laughs> you like Five Guys where? Uh, uh, that's after dark. <laughs> Everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> All up in it. <laughs> Whoa. What the fuck? That seems like one Eddie. <laughs> I know. Did Eddie come back home? No. <laughs> All I want for Christmas is for you to do this. Follow us on Twitter. There we go. Like us on Facebook. There we go. <laughs> that's good. HTTP colon slash slash audio shelf me. Dot me. Wait. <laughs> <laughs>